Hello, welcome back to Seconds Out. My name is Eamon Khan here with the sweet Terminator, Shadeja Green, back out in action 15th of December. Shadeja, how's life treating you? Life is great, man. Life is tough. Um, I'm putting myself through the works. Uh, I'm actually enjoying it, you know, the pain and the, and everything that I'm going through. So life is amazing. Just talking about pain in the sense of you inflicting pain you're someone who has 11 knockouts 11 stoppages in the ring not many of those women around that carry that sort of power I like to ask fighters who have that sort of power where do they get it from is it something that you're born with or is it something that you train for I think it's a natural gift um, but you know when I first started my career and started training seriously with Barry Porter you know I, I believe that he enhanced it um, he has a uh, he, he always worked on it he always um he always put me through these training situations where I could become stronger um, and it just stuck with me. So, but my grandfather was a, a knockout puncher as well. Um, my mom never took up on it. And then I think it kind of skipped to me. So, you know, it, you, you can say either way, born and something that was worked on. Certainly indeed. We've seen you in the ring be devastating. What's your scout report, though, on Franchon Cruz de Zern? We've seen her in action recently, but I wonder what you make of her as a fighter. Franchon is a, a great fighter. She's great at what she does. Uh, she makes the fight ugly. She's very, very um, physical. Um, you know, uh, it looks like she has heavy hands as well. Um, you got to be in shape for Franchon Cruz de Zern. Um, she's not somebody you can just come roll over. So I, I intend for it to be a, a fight. Have you sparred yeah. before? Yes, I have. What were those like? I mean, I really can't compare sparring to fighting. Those were back in our amateur days. Um, when we were on the USA teams together. Um, we used to help get each other prepared for uh, world championships. And, um, you know, that was that. It's sparring is sparring. It's completely different. You know, 16-ounce gloves, head gear, head gear you know. With that said I, I was heavier at the time, too. With that said, though, in terms of your scout report on her, you're saying she can sometimes make it messy and make, make it a bit ugly. Do you expect that to be the same sort of fight with you and her in the ring? Um, I expect that to be her fight. Um, mm. I am in control of the way that, you know, I fight when I want to fight and how I want to fight. And, and that that's going to be the key, you know, is basically fighting my fight, um, dominating and, and, and looking good doing so. Um <sighs> You know, um, like I said, I, I don't overlook Franchon not at least one bit because I know she's a tough competitor, a uh, former undisputed world champion. And, you know, obviously she's a force to be reckoned with if she was undisputed. So, what did you make of her fight with Savannah Marshall? I thought it was a good fight. Um, it played out the, the way I thought it should have and would have. Um, Franchon brought it there too. And uh, Savannah made adjustments to hold the lead. And, um, you know, she was victorious in the end. Back to yourself uh, quickly here. Is there, I addressed you, obviously, so someone who's got that knockout power, but is there a danger in that you your boxing skills are overlooked here and that you're more than just someone who can deliver a punch here? Um, You know, it's crazy. This conversation came up with me and my stepfather. He said that basically, you know, sometimes that I attempt to prove that power is just not all I have. And... For, for a long time, I was really in love with my boxing skills and technical abilities. And instead of just, you know, being and doing what comes natural to me, which is putting people out, you know, I would sort of get into that mode of, okay, let me box, let me, you know. But um, sometimes, you know, I don't get paid for overtime. <laughs> I got to go in there and get it done, you know. So um, I've learned a lesson from that. And um, understanding it now, um, I really don't even think too much about what's better. Um, I'm in love with myself as a fighter um, who is 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 trying to get better continuously, training and striving to perfect all parts of my craft. So, have you played the moment in your mind of you lifting up the WBC Super Middleweight title on 15th of December? What does that feel like? It feels like a dream come true. Of course, I've played it in my mind. I've seen it. Um, I've seen the the celebration, that moment with me in the belt, that one-on-one -on -one moment with me just looking at the belt, you know, thanking God for allowing me to finally be able to do so. Um, my road has been shifted so many times before. Um, exciting, excited about 
getting a chance to fight for the title and to now be able and up to fight for the title and winning the title, it's definitely a dream come true. And the moment I, I wake up thinking about the moment, I go to sleep thinking about the moment, I'm thinking about the moment right now. So um, it's a conscious thing on my mind. You bring a lot of excitement to the division and, and boxing in general. And there are so many fights I'd like to see you in against with. And this path to undisputed, uh, starting with uh, lifting the WBC Super title that you're on, do you think that will see you in the ring with Savannah Marshall? My God willing, um, I need to, there's not a bigger threat right now to me than French on Cruz deserve. So d- December 15th, that's my priority. My only thing that I'm actually thinking of um, when I'm victorious, I would love to, you know, fight Savannah Marshall for the rest of the, the, the belts at the WBC super middleweight. I mean, the, the undisputed super middleweight, you know, alibi. I mean, um, it's a dream come true to be a world champion and to be an undisputed world champion. So um, December 15th, French on Cruz de Zern is the top top in my list. And um, I'm going to start with her first. The other fighter, of course, to talk about here is Clarissa Shields. I didn't realize there was such a back and forth between you and Clarissa. Do you think that leads into a fight? And if you could summarize, where has where that all started from? Uh, me, Clarissa Shields, and French on Cruz were all on the USA team together um, back in 2016. We've we've got a great deal of history. Um, it's unfortunate that for a long time, Franchon presented um, that situation as if she ne- had never heard of me or knew about me. Um, however, Clarissa Shields, on the other hand, she knew she knew who I was. We were we were good friends. Um, we did a lot of sparring together to prepare each other. You know, some things happen, and which leads to you know us not being friends anymore. So it kind of heats up every now and then when when she's questioned about Shadeja Green, which is totally understandable. Um, it makes for a great fight in the future, especially with the fact that um, Clarissa Shields is one of the female faces of boxing and has put on great shows and um, done great things for the sport um, as far as women's boxing is concerned. And now I'm trying to put my foot in the door and become one of the faces as well. You know, um, we got people to think like Amanda Serrano and Katie Teller, who really started it off to make women's boxing bigger than it ever has been. So I'm fortunate and, and grateful to be a part of this category and be spoken in the same sentences with those names. Do you feel we've seen Clarissa Shields take on anyone in the ring that has anyone that has uh, power anywhere close to what you have? I mean, if you want to say so, I'm sure she, if you ask her that question, she say that Savannah Marshall had that sort of power. Um, uh, most fighters, when they are facing somebody with that type of power, it's different for the person. You know, they'll judge and say, hey, that was her power against lesser competition. But when she stepped up, did she carry the power? So I'm not really in Clarissa Shields' head. Uh, I don't really know what, what she'll say. But Savannah Marshall um, has a lot of knockouts on her record as well. So You're getting a lot of backing from from Jake Paul here now. And Jake is someone who turned the corner, I think, I feel, with with boxing fans. Boxing fans at the start maybe didn't like him, but considering how, what he's doing for the sport, championing people like yourselves now looking to go to the pro ranks and really hone his craft here. Um, how do you feel he gets on against August? And is he going on the right path to really get recognized and legitimized further? Absolutely. August has more um, experience than Jake, more knockouts than Jake. Um, seems a little bit bigger too. Um, and Jake is now, um, you know, first of all, he's changed the sport of women's boxing. Like you said, he's done amazing things. He's so selfless, you know, um, I'm co maining a big, big fight for Jake and I think that's a beautiful thing. He's bringing eyes to him, myself, um, while I'm trying to accomplish one of my dreams. And Jake is fighting a super experienced, um, strong opponent who, and you know, beating when he beats this this August guy, it puts him in the rankings as such. You know, um, he made the transition to not fight MMA fighter and fight. A, a boxer like August, um, that's a that's that's a that's amazing. It speaks volumes of what he's trying to do. He wants to be a champion, and I think he's taking the perfect steps to do so. Do you want to see the rematch with Tommy Fury? Uh, um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Tommy Fury, um, last couple of outings weren't so thrilling in a sense. Um, there was a lot of uh question about his last couple of victories I'm for whatever Jake is for and that's because I really want to see Jake succeed but after Jake defeats August I see him no reason to st- step back unless it make a lot of economical sense you know um August is the best opponent that 
I mean, any he he's better than anybody Tommy Fury has ever faced. So, you know, we see that Jake is taking those steps to to become a world champion. So uh, I, I want Jake, you know, I can only say that whatever Jake wants to do, I'm in full support of it. Final two questions and the predictions. First of all, I'd like from you, Shadeja, please. We've got, uh, you mentioned about Katie Taylor being a trailblazer. I'll be there in Dublin this weekend to watch her take on uh, Chantal Cameron in the rematch. It was a close fight. But for some people, it wasn't as close. Maybe it was on the scorecards. Do you think uh, Katie Taylor can do anything this time around to overturn the defeat? I'm not sure. The styles makes fights. And unfortunately, Katie Taylor and Chantal Cameron style matchup is just kind of teller made for Chantal Cameron. Um, but I feel like Katie Teller is a great fighter, one of the best female fighters I've seen and can make adjustments. Um, don't get caught into to banging with Chantel. She's bigger. She's stronger, you know. Um, but then, you know, Chantel forces the fight really well and she fights every second of the round. So um, big, big respects to them both for making this happen for a second time. Um, I'll be watching, uh, learning and studying myself. So. Um, honestly, no pick. I'm just looking forward to to being a spectator to that event. And finally, 15th of December, the Sweet Terminator looks to sour Franchon Cruz de Zone's plans. But what happens in the ring between you two? Fireworks, uh, dominance. Um, it's going to be a fight. Uh, Franchon is coming to fight. I know that for sure. And uh, I'm, I'm most certainly coming to fight. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it too. Today's a real pleasure speaking to you and meeting you. Thanks for speaking to the seconds out. Looking forward to seeing you in the ring. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time.